I'd like to dedicate my presentation today to my mother, who is instrumental in my journey um, this far. So my name is Kaylin Reddy, and my job as a botanist is to travel across South Africa and search for this ancient medicinal plant that is used by the koi and sun that may hold secrets to helping with anxiety and depression. Now, the conditions that this plant lives in is harsh. The sun is beating down on it constantly. It has a limited access to water and nutrients. And animals constantly sought after it. So it's a very tricky plant to find. And in my work, we started to do something called the skeletium jump, as you can see behind me. Because it takes so many hours, sometimes days, sometimes weeks to find these plants. Once we find them, we're literally jumping for joy. Now, the stresses that these plants endure isn't unique to skeletium. In the botanical world, plants that are exposed to the most intense stress sometimes give us the most interesting chemistry that can help with health issues. And this applies to the animal world as well. And in our lives, day to day, the stress that we experience can sometimes last for weeks, months, and at times, years. But as a kid, these stresses weren't apparent to me. I, life was simple. I had a deep hunger for knowledge. And I would constantly pester my parents with questions like, why is the sky blue? Or what is this voice in my head? Or what makes us the way that we are? Now, my parents didn't always have the answers. But what they did have was a culture of fostering curiosity. They would take note of my questions and every few weeks take me to the library to try and answer these questions. This culture of curiosity stayed with me all the way through high school. And the question of what made us the way that we are was still on my mind. So I decided to study a BSc in biochemistry and chemistry to understand chemically what made us the way that we are. Now it was tough, really tough. I was passionate about it, but I wasn't great at it straight off the bat. I was a student that had to learn something two or three times before it made sense to me. I was a student that had to sit outside the lecturer's office every day to try and get these concepts to stick. And eventually it did, and my studies got somewhat easier. And then in 2016, in my first year, fees must fall hit. And it was incredibly difficult to study from a distance, and I started struggling with my studies. And on the nights that I felt like giving up, the one person who motivated me, gave me love and compassion, and reminded me of how much I was capable of was my mother. Fast forward to my third year. At the end of my studies, things were getting a little better, but it was one of the most difficult years in my studies. And the why is what got me through those studies. I wanted to understand what made us the way that we are. This is what was motivating me. And then my world got turned upside down. My mother was diagnosed with a rare type of blood cancer called myelomonocytic leukemia. It's where your body starts attacking its own blood cells, thinking it's foreign. So my life went from one stress to a whole different kind of stress, where we were spending nights at the hospital, and on the occasions where we could convince the nurses to stay over, we'd stay over, and I'd have to get to campus at 6.30 the next day. I studied most of the nights in the hospital, but I'd take any chance to be as close to my support system at that stage. Fast forward to the end of my third year, and my mother had lost the battle with cancer, and it was difficult to navigate that. And my why of what made us the way that we are wasn't sufficient anymore. Anything in light of losing a loved one, that question was just not enough to motivate me anymore. So I had to rethink on why I wanted to do what I wanted to do. And I reminded myself of what my mother saw in me. I wanted to give the same love and compassion and inspire someone else down the line. But I knew that the journey going down that path was going to be difficult. I had to educate myself. I had to push myself to my limits. But I knew this was what I wanted to do. So towards the end of my third year, when trying to look to, to, to study honors, Final exams were coming up. I didn't want to spend another year at university. I really wanted to fulfill my why. So I started approaching supervisors and talking to lecturers about why my academic performance may have dipped. 
some lecturers were quite cold and would tell me things like, at least she didn't suffer so long. Or, we hear all kinds of excuses nowadays. This was difficult to break through. And my why started to crumble. But one person who showed real compassion and, in, and enthusiasm in motivating me was Dr. Gary Stafford. He inspired me to see my capabilities and push me forward, once again, reminding me that's the kind of person I want to be. So I continued in my studies, and he inspired me to pursue an honors in medicinal plant sciences to deliver drugs that could help people reduce their anxiety. I pursued this. The honors year didn't get any easier. In fact, it got more difficult. Now, coming from a background where my parents came out of apartheid, and any opportunity that they had, they worked for, fought for, and would hold on to it. As a first generation university student and person of color, when an opportunity came past me, I didn't know when I could say no to it. So I developed a culture of saying yes, 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 pushing myself to my limit. And this made me develop an unhealthy, I could say, obsession with my work. I was at university from 6.30 in the morning till 6.30 in the evenings. And it was really taking a lot out of my mental health and my physical health. But once again, a group of individuals around me came together, showed compassion and love, and motivated me. And this is my friend family that I worked with in my honors. Each one of them played a significant role in motivating me to be who I am today. After my honors year, I was presented with the option or with the possibility to move to Stellenbosch to do my MSc. Now, it was a big leap for me. I'd never been away from home. I'd just lost my mom. I was very close to my family. And I had never even been to the town. I had no friends or family there. So it was a big move for me. But I knew that to achieve my dream of showing that same kind of love and compassion and elevating others to achieve their dreams, I needed to do it. So I made the move. And just as I arrived, the pandemic hit. This took an even bigger toll on my mental health. It challenged me and pushed me to limits that I had never seen before. But I continued to stay on this and actually dug my heels deeper into fighting for the stream. And as a result, the MSc was upgraded to a PhD, which, is, which motivates me to constantly fight and achieve that dream now. Right now, my friends remind me of the irony of the situation that I'm in. I study a plant that helps with anxiety. I have anxiety, and I constantly put myself in situations that make me anxious, <laughs> like this. <laughs> but what I found was that constantly placing myself in stressful situations, just like nature, made me see more resilient forms of myself. It made me see that I can, I can define my own limits, and that really pushed me forward to be the best version of myself. Going forward, I hope to inspire others, and I hope to show the same love and compassion that I was shown from multiple people throughout my journey. It just goes to show that also, you can bloom wherever you're planted, but if you just keep in mind that you also have to sometimes show yourself that love and compassion and water yourself every now and then.